All right. So, um, what I'm going to be, <clears throat> what I am going to be talking about today is personal transformation through language learning. And the reason I sort of um, decided to change what I'm going to be speaking about today is because I thought that it would be something that um, would be a bit more unique with me sharing some of my experiences. And I thought for the audience that we have here today would be a little bit more interesting. Perhaps I'm wrong, but we'll see at the end if you um, are still here, you clap or whatever you do, right? So let's get um, started to make sure everything's working. So first of all, I've got to introduce myself, of course. My name is David, David Mansare. Um Some of you might know of me, and if you don't, I'm someone who has, for the last couple of years, been um, conducting interviews online with language professionals, polyglots, and everyday language learners um, from all different walks of life. And I've been um, publishing these interviews online for um, anyone who is interested in language learning, interested in improving language learning, or, and also to help people get involved with languages if they don't already um, know anything about what the language learning process can do for us and how it can change our lives. Um, the reason I do these interviews is number one, because I am extremely curious. Um, I'm, I'm curious about the way other people go about learning languages, the way that they use their methods, how languages change their life, and I'm interested in learning how I can improve my own language learning. That I do it for, for that reason more than anything, to, to be quite honest with you. Um, and so um, the project that I have online at the moment with languages is called um, Languages Culture. Um, it's a podcast which you can find on iTunes, and you can go to languagesculture.com, and I have you know, a number of interviews with different people. So if you want to find out more about me, you can go over to languagesculture.com and you can hear what um, the interview sound like and the advice that is given away. Everything is for free. Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you nothing. Okay, so for me, language learning has always been a process of discovery. It's not so much about the methods that we use. It's not so much about learning words and sentences. It's all about discovering things. And when I say that it is about discovery for me, it means, of course, discovering a lot about a new language, discovering a lot about a new culture. But more than anything, it's for me what I discover about myself. And this is what I want to share with all of you today. But first, I'll share my first experience with languages, and that was when I was at school, um, like probably most of you here, and it wasn't a pleasant experience. Um, I studied German at school for three years. Um, I've not retained anything, so no one come up to me and speak in German. Um, when, I started, when I started learning languages, I was really enthusiastic. I thought that, you know, I'm going to learn a new language, maybe find a girl or something, um, get involved in new culture. And I was really enthusiastic. But um, after some time, I sort of, my interest sort of disappeared. And it's a bit sad to say, but I was influenced by, you know, my peers at the time. Remember, I'm I was a maybe 12 year old boy at the time. And um, one of the comments that I got often is, oh, David, the teacher's pet, you know. You're sitting at the front of the class to learn this language that sounds like you've got phlegm in your throat, you know, when you're speaking, um, talking about the German language. And I sort of got influenced by the negativity. And then another experience that was really, really um, eye-opening for me was the first time that I went to Poland. Um, at the time, I was 18, I think. Um, and before I say why this experience was so enriching for me, um, I will talk about um, sort of my background. Um, I came from a part of London, which was, I, I'm from London in England, and it's, I came from a part of the, of the, something funny, sorry. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> um, and I was very, 
um, I, came, I came from a poor part of London, so I didn't have very much money, and I was surrounded by um, a lot of negativity. And so when I say I was surrounded by negativity, what do I mean exactly? I mean drugs, violence, and anything you can think in between. It was something that was around me constantly. And it was very difficult to do anything positive with your life when you're surrounded by all of this negativity. And so anytime someone would try to do something positive, um, I don't know, maybe learn a language or get involved in a travel or something that was outside of the box, you sort of got pigeonholed as different or weird or something like that. Um, and so it was very difficult for me to break out of this sort of negative, negative bubble that I was in. However, I had an experience which was very enriching for me and it was the first time I went to Poland. The guy that I knew um, invited me to work on a documentary sort of project and I was going to be working as, a, as an assistant editor. And we went to Poland and I didn't know anything about languages or anything like that, still only spoke English. And when we got there, I realized on one occasion, many occasions I should say, that when I would walk into a room, everybody would be speaking in Polish, and I would walk in and everyone would turn around and look at me and then start speaking in English. And they would, it would change the language for me. And it was an act of kindness, which I really appreciated. But on the other side of things, it made me feel really stupid. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. It made me feel stupid, incompetent, made me feel lazy. It made me realize how close-minded and how shut off I was from what the world has to offer. And so that sort of planted a seed in my mind about maybe I could think about learning a foreign language. And it was also really eye-opening because mm, you know, I mean, any city in the world that you go to, there are going to be, well not any, but major cities, there are going to be foreigners. And you have different types of people, people who are happy to have foreigners in their country and people who are not so happy to have foreigners in the country. Um, I was around a lot of negativity, as I said, so I always absorbed the negative ideas about foreigners in London. And this experience made me realize, you know, why do people say negative things about foreigners all the time? I, I, was ha I had prepackaged opinions inserted into my mind and I hadn't gone out to check whether or not these things I was hearing was true. And so that was sort of where things started for me. So it was all with travel. Um, languages? are something that taught me how to be more open as a person. I had many, many, many negative experiences um, from the time when I was living with a guy who was on crack, literally, and he robbed me from my mobile phone. It wasn't too expensive. I've had myself taken to a cash point with a knife, told to take all of my money out and give to the person. I was really clever because I had two cards and I switched them and put the other one right here. So he didn't take my money. But I've had many experiences like this and friends, people who I thought were my friends turned out not to be my friends and betrayed me. And so I became a really closed person. I became closed to sharing about myself my life, my experiences, my emotions, anything that I thought would make a person or give a person power to, to hurt me in a way. But then I started learning languages. And if you're learning a language, you're not gonna get very far if you don't open up and share with people. Share with them about your life, who you are, all of these topics that we have in a language exchange or with our friends. And I realized really early on that when we are speaking with people and it is just for a language exchange, it can be difficult to advance in your language studies because you end up talking about the same topics. What's the weather like? Where are you from? What's your job? You can do the next one, right? And so languages forced me to 
open up and share my life because I really wanted to get out there and learn and become more of a person, a more communicative sort of person. And so this is another thing that languages have helped me to develop in myself. And it, I didn't realize that I was such a close person at the time. I thought I was really open. But then sometimes when you embark on a journey, you realize that the opposite is the truth, isn't it? Can anyone relate? Yeah. Amen, he says. <laughs> I feel like a preacher. <laughs> Another thing that languages have done for me is made me more confident. It's made me learn that it is important to continue moving forward despite some of the thoughts that we have in our minds. Even though we have thoughts in our minds that tell us that we can't continue, that tell us that we aren't good enough, to tell, that tell us that we don't have the ability, that there is no way to get to the other side of the mountain, if I can say that, unless you do continue. Um, and I'm going to share a story which is probably inappropriate to share with you. <laughs> it's probably inappropriate, but I'm going to share it anyway because I was told that in order to really connect with people, you have to share things that maybe scare you a little bit. And so I'm standing here and I'm a little bit scared of sharing some of my stories with you all today. Fear of people judging me or anything. But you're going to forget about it all probably by tomorrow, right? <laughs> so I went to Madrid for the first time after I had been learning Spanish for eight months. And I thought I knew how to speak Spanish at this point. I thought I knew how to speak Spanish. And I was there for three weeks, and it was a very difficult experience. You know, I realized how much I didn't know because I didn't understand hardly anything. Um, and my girlfriend at the time came to visit me, and she and I went to a hotel, got some wine. I like wine in Spain, it's cheap too. And to fast forward past the inappropriate part, um, <laughs> so th that's the inappropriate part, right? <laughs> and then I had this, um, I was in a hotel room, and this I have a girl standing there and saying to me that she does not want to be pregnant and that I'm an idiot and that I didn't listen to her. <laughs> and so I said, don't worry, everything is going to be okay. I am going to go to the pharmacy to buy the morning after pill, all right? And so I went downstairs and I went to the reception and I asked the lady to help me to get to the nearest pharmacy. And then she said to me, are you okay? And I said that I'm okay, you know, swaying like this. <laughs> and she gave me a map and then she drew on the map where I needed to go. And she explained that it's up this way, up left, right, up, 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 up. Um, I have to mention that it was raining as well at the time. And so, drunk guy, in a bit of a panic, it's raining. So I went outside and I, you know, memorized what was on the map. You know, I tried to memorize as much as possible. And I went up the road and I was on my journey off to buy the morning after pill, right, in Spain. All right, so I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking. And then... I thought, I can't remember what I need to do next. So I opened up the map, went into my pocket, opened up the map. And I looked at the map, and then the rain came down, shot down on it, and poof, gone. No map. You know, now I have no map, right? And so I'm going to fast forward a little bit again. And then I asked some people to help me. Um, I think I misunderstood the directions, because where the first guy told me to go, there was no pharmacy. And I ended up having to go in another direction. So I then got to the pharmacy. Um, and then the woman asked me what I would like, what I would like. And I stood there thinking, finally, I'm here. And then I asked her, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> My language books didn't teach me morning after pill, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and so I stood there, you know, kind of like how I am now, just kind of... <sighs> You know? <laughs> <coughs> but 
But I did, you know, um, do you guys use these picture dictionaries that have, you know, words in, words of everything? And I remember I had a pictionary, a picture, a picture dictionary that I had back in London. I, I think I saw the word for, for pill. You know, I think I saw the word for pill. I went through that section. Um, and what I saw in my mind was something that started with P. P, 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 P. And the word that came to mind was pastel. Yeah? Yeah? Pastel, right? And for those, <laughs> pastel, right? And so I'm standing there in front of this lady, and then I said, okay, maybe she won't understand, but I'll try a direct translation, right? I'll try and see if it works. And I said, um, quiero, quiero un pastel mañana. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> and then she looked at me, she looked at me and, and said, huh? And, and, and when you're sort of starting with language, when someone doesn't understand you, what, you, what do you do? You, you say the same thing louder, right? Quiero un pastel mañana! Yeah? <laughs> um, and she didn't understand me, right? Um, and I felt afraid, I was nervous, but I didn't want to give up. You know, I just kept on going, kept on going. Um, for a long time, surprisingly, with the same words. Um, but eventually, you know, I got Google Translate out of my pocket, thank God. And I got what I wanted. And for those of you who don't speak Spanish, I'm sure many of you do, but what I was saying is that I want a cake tomorrow. You know? I was asking her if I wanted a, I wanted a cake tomorrow. And she looked at me with these blank stares. And so this story is, you know, it's extreme, isn't it? It's a Pardon me? That's a good question, do you know? <laughs> yeah, so. Um, this story is extreme, right? It's on the extreme end of the spectrum of situations we can find ourselves in that can make us feel afraid and that can require some courage, persistence, and to believe that we can achieve what we want even if what we think we need or want is in that particular situation out of our reach. You know, with time we can do that. So languages really did teach me how I can be um, more of a confident person. And so, what languages have done for me, uh, they uh, languages have transformed my mind to be a more open person, to be more accepting of differences with people. It's told me that it's okay to be vulnerable and to share who you are and that who you are is actually very important and very valuable. This is the very thing that we use to connect with people to form new relationships. It's what makes us interesting. And so when we get afraid and we go into our shells and we try to hide who we are, what we can actually do is stop. We can stop ourselves from getting hurt, of course. That may be what we try to do. But what we also do is stop good people. We stop ourselves from experiencing amazing experiences if we're close. So it's important to be open. And this is something languages have taught me about myself. Languages have also taught me that it's not important to be the best. We can strive to improve, to become more each time, try. But you don't have to be the best to enjoy your experiences, to get something out of what it is that you are embarking on. I'm sure all of you here have had the experience of, I'm not as good as that person or this person at some point. Am I right? Yes or no? Yeah, you don't want to admit it, but yes. All right? We all have these thoughts, and I think it's, it's human nature sometimes to think that. But again, language learning is not a competition. It's not something that we do because we want to just acquire another language or because we want to impress people. Because in fact, what keeps us going are the relationships we form with people, the growth that we get inside of ourselves, and also what we're going to see in the world and in people it just enriches our lives. And so something that I always make sure that I want to remember Whenever I am on my journey and I'm feeling as though that I want to give up, or I feel that I'm not good enough, or I just feel plain stupid, is that languages 
it's not so much about words and sentences, but it's about connecting with the hearts and minds of people and growing as individuals. And this is what I would say, I have to say about language learning and transformation. I could go on a long list of things that languages have done for me. And my goal here today is not to, to teach you something that you don't know, but to bring something to the surface that I think is sometimes easy to forget. Online, I, you know, I browse the forums and I look at what people have to say about language learning and I think that sometimes people forget that it's not about how many words you know, it's not about how many languages you know, it's not a competition. It's really about what languages can do for you as an individual, what you grow, how you grow, sorry, and what you get out of the experiences. So if you take anything away from today, or remember anything, after you forget my story, is that languages are not about words and sentences, but about connecting with the hearts and minds of people. And that's what I have to say today. Thank you.